Hi guys, uh, this is a small demo of what we're going to be doing in Gravity Sketch, or you can do it here in Fusion or whatever you are interested in. So you see, part of my um, approach, I'm going to turn off all the bodies so you can see uh, what I did. I'm working on the sculpt environment, which is where I like to work. You're welcome to try and work somewhere else. Um, all right, so I started by generating a side view of my thumbnail, which is what I um, brought in. Something that I think I should should have done is probably done the outline of the actual car, but uh, since we're probably not going to be able to meet before you start these, uh, just start with something like this. To make your life easier, notice that I have cropped the image kind of to the front and back so that I can scale it easier in case that we have like visual reference of what we want the top view to look like uh, then potentially we should have uh, that's going to help when we align kind of like edge to edge for example in this uh, in this one we can see that the front of this car actually matches the front of the other car and actually bringing them uh, cropped uh, would have been really helpful compared to this one, which they're not cropped and I had to, to kind of fiddle with it. So, uh, the first thing that I did for this one is to is I started creating some uh, wheels, right? So, uh, if you want to do that, you basically would go to the uh, cylinder or the revolve tool that you use for uh, gravity. And then I create it from the center out until I have something as close to my size as my wheel. Remember, I can always uh, move this to fit, right? And I probably should have told it before, I don't really want all ge this geometry, so I'm just going to get rid of it. And, whoops, one too many. And then for this uh, edge, I just scaled it down just a little bit. And moved it closed because I just want to understand where those wheels are and then the rest of it is basically copying and pasting and moving back then uh, grabbing those two objects copy oh before that we need to figure out how wide this car is going to be so basically what I did as I, uh, I copied and pasted this uh, car send this to 90 degree and then, um, and I basically just copied that to find a ratio of three wheels wide. So then I can do the same thing, or I can just mirror that and bring that in. So I know that's going to be the width that I have. So that then I can bring my uh, tire from the side and bring that in. If you're doing a vehicle that's older than a sports car, you can either uh, find a si uh, kind of like a top view of a car of a similar size and use that to understand the size, or you can also um, well find the image measure us a uh, wheel and find out the proportion from there but you could bring the canvas here and kind of like match it to that so as you see that um, I would then probably get rid of this these two bodies and then I can oh, this one too and then I would just mirror duplicate that maybe the one that I shouldn't have so if I go here Symmetry, mirror duplicate, then find the target plane, and that's going to do that. So he's going to delete this because I already had it, the ones I'm using. And as you can see, I have created uh, front uh, wheels, and I also kept the two in the middle, which are going to be useful. And then I just turned off the ones that I use for my proportion for uh, width. Then the next step that I'm going to do is I have the gesture lines of what I want to do, right? Um, if we're doing a show, we're not going to get the benefit of symmetry, so we would probably need to, to sketch the bottom. I'll, I'll do a little demo of that um, following. So this is, these are my sketches. 
And what I'm doing here is I'm creating a face, and this will be so much faster in Gravity Sketch, but for the moment, this is what we got. Uh, so I'm trying to get it as thin as possible. I don't really want a super thick line, but there we go, I have a face. So I'm going to edit form, remember alt drag is going to, in this case, for example, if I want to continue creating, it's going to create more lines. So I've created something that is close to the gesture line and I can always um, adjust to match. We're trying to replicate the same grace and intensity that we have uh, for those. And I'll do the same thing with this line, this line, and this line, so that you get something like uh, this, right? So I have all the gesture lines that live on the side view of my drawing, or the, on the mid uh, center line of my drawing. Um, the next thing that we want to do is maybe, I'm going to start with this line potentially. Then I'm going to copy and paste it and drag it out to the side. Now I don't want it to be you know, like on the super edge of my tire, right? Because what I want it to be slightly inside. And then I'm going to use uh, my edit form features to potentially bring this in, maybe bring this in a little bit as well. Maybe I, I want something more dramatic and I want uh, that face there out a little bit more dramatically. We want those lines to be simple and grateful. You see how right now this one's not like wobbly here. So I want those to flow with as much grace as possible. Let me bring this a little bit further in, right? So in the same way, I would copy this line at the back, this line over here. You might want to see some cars from the top. Um, basically, I'm going to jump into the ones that I have created, right? So if you see, I have that same gesture line here. I'll pull this one in, make this one a little fatter here at the top. Probably this can uh, improve a little bit. You can take some license if you have some lines that don't really work to slightly adjust your original theme to make it fit. Um, I have the hip of the car. Right now I, they're not aligned here. It's okay. They don't have to be aligned. If you want to, you can like probably change the direction a little bit more. But I think in this case I like it in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this one out just a bit. Uh, and something very important, the roofs of the car are of a different width at the front than they are at the back. So if you see, when I copied that middle line, um, I tried to generate some taper. And a lot of this is going to be getting the right taper, right? So the rear glass is going to be thinner than my front glass. But we have a, an issue right now, which is that from this point to this point to that point, it's just a straight line, right? And that's the importance of the center line. So probably in the center, I don't need this body. I'm going to get rid of it. So it doesn't let me select it directly. Okay, so I can get rid of that. And probably I don't need this section intersecting. That's going to be visual, visual noise. But something that I do want to do is I want to select this body 19, uh, which is my, my window. And I want it to be a little bit above what I have. So that when I join that point, that point, and that point, I can have an arc rather than a straight line if I did it here. Another thing that you can do instead of translating that could be to scale it just a little bit. And then we can maybe adjust some of the points so that we can keep the 
kind of the same attitude of the line, like where we want it to start being thick and thin. We probably don't want super parallel lines uh, because that's going to make our car feel a little bit more boring. Now we need to understand when I want this to fall to the back and maybe if I want like a little thing lifting or maybe I'm going to fall all the way here. We don't want to go way past that wheel. So I can either intentionally do it and then see how that feels. So I can pull this one in a little bit. If you see, we can see that there could be that extra surface there. Now, the glass, I can have a bulging uh, hood or I can have a hood that dips a little bit more. So in this case, I'm going to try a hood that dips a little bit more. So I actually want this first line to be actually a little bit lower than uh, the rest of my uh, thing. So I'm get rid of this little edge. Now I'm going to make this edge here match with that. Maybe I could even just make that whole face a little bit lower. Right? Now I don't want them to also create a straight line here, so I have the option either to make this ones retreat a little bit or bring this ones forward or both, depending on what I want to do. But now, when I look at it from the top, I'm going to have a nice arc rather than that. And you can see a lot, but from here to here to here, we do have another arc. Now, the next thing is to understand how we want to finish the front and how we want to finish the back. And this is just some quick reference. In this case, I could start a new body, or in this case, I'm just going to use my um, this here, hold on. Let me actually create a little bit of an extra thing. I'm going to rotate so I make it easier. And this is why it's like gravity sketch is so beautiful. Right now I have to kind of fight this and bring it back, right? Do I want kind of like a shark nose that's going to make this one like really, really uh, like this? Or do I want it to fall like that? Like, it, like it, it's got like a, a chin or something. And I think I, or do I want it vertical? I think I want a little bit like a shark nose. I'm just going to lower this thing. Um, I'll just continue with that uh, thing. I want to continue the line work and I'm going to make sure that that comes to the front so I understand where that floor is. Uh, and maybe when well, we'll be able to modify that when we do. Sketching this in Gravity Sketch is also so much easier. Uh, so don't despair if, if you're getting confused here. But if you do, you can just follow the steps. If you decide you don't want to do any fusion and the gravity is, or something happens, that's not going to uh, be a problem. In this case, I want this to also kind of like come down like this. And then after that, you probably want to let it drop here as well. Now, it's something very important with the floor. We want to make sure that this line and this line actually feel like they're one gesture in need. We don't want to create, say if I create another face here. Create face in this plane. Say, I, I say, okay, I'm going to create a floor, so I'm going to create a face like that. Because it's horizontal, obviously. So, from here, I'm going to make this long and call it a day, right? Because what I'm doing here, and that's a problem that when we sketch, uh, it happens, is that if you see like this point and that point, feel like, there, like there's a step, and that's going to be a little bit of a problem. So... Maybe what we want to start doing is grabbing this uh, face and then by alt-dragging, 
I'm creating a little bit more of that. And I can make a line that's not necessarily perfectly parallel or, or uh, to the ground. It could be ascending, it could be, could be descending. I could have a, a little gesture that maybe, I don't know, goes up or, or down. In this case, I'm going to leave it slightly, a little bit more straight. But now we can see how those lines connect. And the beauty of what I just showed you is that now, I'm going to turn off my canvas, I have a series of lines that I can use when I have the center line of my car. i probably get rid of this one as well, since this is not going to add much to that. Right? So, I can already start using this in order to work, uh, but we're going to add a few more lines. And you may wonder why this line on this bottom, I didn't do it, and the main reason is that uh, it's not really going to add much because that's just going to create visual noise there, right? So what you can do if you want a car that's in this, let's say in this view, and you want to draw in the other direction, you just flip the image. Um, real quick, just to finish, I can create a plane here real quick. Create that. I'm going to bring it like to that spot. Probably only need one of this, and then from that center line, I'm going to activate symmetry first. Just bring it, give it a little bit more, bring it to touch that. That gives me a very nice arc that I can consider when sketching. Let me just make sure this touch better. And there we go. So there, there. So I know where that is going to end, right? Maybe with the back of the window, I could do something similar. I can also try using, if you're using Fusion, you have Bridge, Bridge. Find that, uh, that face edge one, find this second edge, and then just tell it to do two faces so that it's a symmetry in the middle and I can create that and then all I would have to do is make sure that point matches that at some point all right so that's one option or the other one is to actually do the same thing with the plane and join those three points with an arc. So let's quickly do that. I think I prefer that method. Create that plane. But I only want to well, see the origin. Maybe that. But I only want two length, two width in one face and that that did it I'm going to scale it so it's more or less the same size move it back there edit form I can bring this back here, back there, and up, and out, so we'll make sure that it's touching, there we go, they are touching, it's a little fat, but I think that's fine, whoops, 
And we wanted to do, uh, before we do that, we wanted to make a symmetry, but you get my point. And that way, we just want to join those points with an arc. And just for the sake of speed, I'm going to stop doing that uh, now. Just, I'm going to just show you how to do the one from the floor. So I'm going to create a plane, that's going to be important as well. Um, let me start from the front. So I'm going to create uh, that plane here. Okay, now that's working. Edit, I'm going to make it in. Actually, I may want to copy this. So I'm going to bring it all the way to the front. Make sure it starts more or less on the floor there. And then I can go and come on, get the edge. Okay, so it's not leading to the edge. And form. Okay, and from here, I'm going to start going around the car. And back. We're going to create a quick round and we can adjust. to make sure that it's actually touching what we want. We also want it to be able to go up and up. We can just adjust with our Line we select this from the middle. Uh, we have it on one side, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this, and then we're going to mirror duplicate this. Right now, there's many things that you can choose to do with your floor. Right, your car could be maybe get wider here at the front, and then go small, like get a little thinner. I'm actually going to add one edge. And remember, this is just for you guys to get one template to work. So don't get too caught up on this. Like I am starting to do right now. Try to avoid the temptation. Okay, so now we have this. And I think that's enough to probably start our work. Um, to get it, I probably want to go to the render world. And there I go, I have uh, something that uses an underlay. I have uh, made the background white, so you can use that. Probably we don't want shadows, so let's uh, see if we can turn them off. It's not a position that one. Okay, I just removed the ground tool, so we, we get that. I'm probably going to switch the materials uh, for what we have here. So they're just black. Okay. I don't want that. I want... There we go. I'm going to get 
paint, powder coat rough. I'm going to get black paint. Okay, so probably you want to create your lines with a little bit more width so we can actually uh, see them, right? So I would probably go and just pull and make these things a little bit lighter. Um, maybe we want those wheels in the middle uh, to be a little bit more inconspicuous. Um, so maybe we can add the gray. Just ready to that. Study sixteen. Nope. There we go. But now I can take a screenshot here um, or here or here and use this an underlay uh, to work with to, to start my sketching. So let's say that I wanted to create, let's say, a side perspective, which is interesting. Well, there is a, let's say this one is what we want. Um, let me just also, now that I have this, also make these objects in the background a little bit more transparent. And maybe the floor too. Move mm -hmm. the first one to go and move the floor from that other side. There we go. So what I can do here is just take a uh, screenshot and I can take it into Photoshop or whatever software you want. Then I can paste it there. And I can say that within my condition that's going to be one side. Maybe I want one that's here. And everything else. Maybe I want that one to be smaller for some reason. This moment you don't have to worry about that that much, but it will help. Uh, maybe I want to explore the front of the car, so I want to have that. Screen. So you can start dropping some interesting uh, bits. Wait, that's not the one I just did. Come on, Fusion, work with me. And screen. So again, these are going to be a little bit too uh, light. But let's assume that I did that and I got it, all the things that I needed, right? I'm um, going to probably, uh, join those. Uh, let's see what happens if I play with the levels. I can make some of those side views disappear. Out some of the darker, darker. Trying to get those wheels to go out. Here we go. A little bit. So you can play with that. Probably like a third generation better. And then, if these lines were a little bit more visible, you could print them and uh, learn by 17 or something like that, and then just like very lightly, and then come and start sketching. Or you can print some that are really dark, and then go from there. And you can see well, this thing disappeared again. So let's go to the painting workspace for some reason. I'm going to choose that favorite brush that you guys liked to simulate color pencil, and then we can start uh, playing with how that car could look. 
right? So I can start saying in one of my pages, maybe I want those to be maybe creases. Green and take them from from my sketch. I can get that window graphic. I know where the rest of my car is. I know that. I know that that's going to potentially give me a pillar, right? So I can say, oh, that's going to be the pillar. Maybe that's going to be the other end. Maybe I want that to be a window of my car. But I'm respecting those elements. I can work with the center line. Maybe imagine what that is doing we can add some some extra smaller details something important is that our gestures can like always remain And then I can start exploring how I want those sections to be, right? Like maybe if I slice the car up here, I'm going to get something like this down. This could come up. Then from here down, I could do something like this and go back in, right? Maybe up here, I can go over there, go back in, right? The beauty of this is that if I were to kind of like replicate that same sketch, down here, I could explore it in a different way, right? So. You can say okay. That's going to be my gesture. That's going to be my window. That's going to be the back. It's going to be that gesture there. I have my center line. You get the main body. You can refine a little bit on the other lines that I have. Right? So let's say that I decide to keep that same line here. But in this case, I want this to be, uh, I don't know, maybe. Okay, so we have a section, it comes down. From here, I want it to be a straight, jagged edge. Maybe we give it a little bit of a thing and we celebrate that same gesture by creating a surface there, right? So that's gonna catch light. It's going to become more interesting. Get that window. Maybe I want a different window cut. It's going to go to that line. Understand how that just aren't going to be as pretty as the other ones. Yeah. 
things, right? So I can start exploring what these gestures are as long as my main gestures that I wanted always remain visible, right? So I have two different ways of interpreting a surface. And now I can explore them on this side and all that stuff. Now this car, if you see, for example, this car over here, has a huge front so the center one so I can like very quickly kind of like explore some of these things but I don't necessarily have to detail the entire car, right? This is from dominant, so I could say, you know what? I'm going to explore a mouth that this car could have here. Maybe the lights do this, and I spend my time working on that front and understanding that front only and maybe I leave the rest of it ambiguous so I don't have to really worry about that I'm worried about this and I can probably modify that center line a little bit start getting ideas of where I want to go and this probably sketches a little bit rough but you know what I want, like I have on the surface to do this, then up, then down, then maybe I can think about some other elements. But maybe this is where I stop. I don't need to detail the entire sketch. I only need to detail the front. All right, I'm going to stop now because this is a lot of information, but hopefully this is uh, useful for you. And I'll be there to answer questions and kind of like guide you in case you get a little bit more stuck.